Let's remain standing and turn to hymn number seven. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Father, we come before you this evening in your presence, thankful for your calling that you have placed on our lives. Tonight, we celebrate your calling, the call to a life of Christian service, the call to prepare educationally, Father, for that, uh, that work that you have set before us. God, we thank you for our graduates, their families. We pray your blessings on them, on the ministries that you call them to. God, may you use them in a mighty way for the advancement of your kingdom, your gospel around the world. Father, may you be honored in all that we say and do in this place tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. Well, let me say welcome to a joyous occasion for all of us at Clear Creek Baptist Bible College. This is a time when we get to celebrate God's working in the lives of these graduates and uh, we just get to celebrate with their families, uh, faculty and staff and friends, and we are glad and want to say we are honored that you are a part of this celebration tonight. Uh, I want to say that uh, there are many people here tonight who I know have invested uh, in these men and women who are sitting here tonight and I want to take just a few moments to make sure that we recognize because I believe that's important. Uh, before I go any further, I also want to say a thank you to Dr. Ron Howard. I think Dr. Howard, he may be up there in the uh, top somewhere, but Dr. Ron Howard, who is pastor here at First Baptist Church, 
and all of his staff. Uh, we want to say thank you to them. They provide these uh, wonderful, beautiful facilities to us so that we can come and celebrate this time with our students. I don't know if you know this or not, but First Baptist Church of Pineville is the mother church uh, uh, that birthed uh, Clear Creek Baptist Bible College when uh, L.C. Kelly was president, uh, was pastor here. God birthed it in his heart to have a Bible college, a place where uh, uh, preachers could come and, and get theological training. And he was pastor of this church, so uh, it's a special time in our lives when we can come back to this place and uh, celebrate what God has done in the lives of these graduates. So, uh, Dr. Howard, we want to say thank you to you and your staff. Uh, thank you for opening your facilities up to us. We also have uh, some other folks that uh, I want to recognize who have invested in these. Uh, we see some graduates here on these first two rows of this church, but behind these men and women uh, are some very important people to them that I know that they would say to all of you, if it weren't for these folks, they would not be here today. So I want to ask you if you are a family member of one of these graduates here tonight. I want to ask you just to stand. I want to recognize you tonight as a family member. Would you stand? Amen. 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 Some of you may have been in our awards chapel this morning, but uh, if you weren't, I'll tell you this. I told some of the family members there, uh, I want you to know that we counted a privilege to have been able to invest in your sons, daughters, grandsons, granddaughters, nieces, nephews, whatever they are to you. I want you to know it was been a privilege for us to uh, have them for these few years and to invest in them. So thank you for sharing them with us. Also, besides immediate family members, I also know that these folks would tell us that uh, they've had great support from their church families. You know, every single student that comes to Clear Creek has to be recommended by their local church. And uh, many of you folks here today are a part of those church families. You have invested in them too. So I want to say, if you're a part of a church family, these graduates tonight, I want to ask you to stand so we could recognize you too tonight. Would you stand and let us recognize you? Wow, wow, great, great. Thank you so much for your faithful support uh, as these folks uh, surrendered to a call. They were obedient, and you were obedient to support them. So thank you for all that you have done to get them to this point. And I also want to say to you, behind me sits uh, a faculty and staff that also have invested uh, in these folks. Uh, these are folks that uh, work with these graduates. They taught them in the classroom, and they taught them outside of the classroom as they worked alongside them as we fellowship with them uh, throughout the years. So I want to say to you graduates and families and church families, behind me stands what I believe to be the best faculty and staff you'll ever find when it comes to preparing men and women uh, for the calling that God has placed upon their lives. I'll ask you to recognize these folks. Today. I also want to recognize on our platform our chairman of our board of trustees, Mr. Benny Bush, Reverend Benny Bush. Benny is a pastor at Faith Baptist Church in Corbin, Kentucky. I was just talking to Benny. He's been there 25 years as pastor at Faith Baptist Church. So graduates, there's a great illustration of you of, of perseverance in the ministry. And his sweet wife, Miss Charlotte, is, I think I saw her back in the back. Miss Charlotte, you stand up there. Good to see you tonight. God bless you. And I also have some other trustees I saw too, Brother Mark Payton and Brother Ken Felty. Would you folks stand? We want to recognize you tonight. Do I have any other trustees that are here tonight? I didn't see anybody else. Would you give these folks a hand, please? <clears throat> these folks serve on our board of trustees and give us some wise guidance and leadership and input. Uh, at Clear Creek, so we appreciate them so much, and it always makes me happy when I see trustees come and share in this time of celebration with us. Also on the platform, I want to take time to go ahead and introduce our speaker for us tonight, uh, Dr. Charles 
Sullivan is our speaker tonight. Uh, Dr. Sullivan is a former executive director, treasurer of the State Convention of Baptists in Indiana. But uh, Dr. Sullivan may have been a state executive director, but he's also a pastor at heart. I think he told me uh, this is your 67th year in ministry, uh, 67th year in ministry. And uh, he has been a pastor in uh, Tennessee and in Oklahoma and in Texas uh, before he was called to serve the Lord with Indiana Baptist. He's held revivals all over our country in 21 states. He's been a part of preaching ministries all over the world and has served as a Bible teacher and pastor conference preacher all over our Southern Baptist Convention. He's actually done a revival on our uh, campus uh, years ago. Dr. Sullivan is a gifted and a passionate preacher of the Word of God. Uh, Dr. Sullivan, I want to thank you for taking time to come and to share with us. And his sweet wife, Miss Delilah, is sitting back here. Miss Delilah, you stand too. I want to recognize you. Would you please give them a hand today? A lot of folks have invested uh, a lot of time, a lot of prayers, a lot of finances for these graduates to get them here. And uh, to all of you, we say thank you again. Uh, it's been an honor and a privilege uh, to uh, invest in these folks, and we thank you for what you mean uh, to them. At this time, we do have some awards that we want to uh, take time to uh, recognize a few folks. Uh, these are uh, awards that these students have earned, and uh, we want to recognize them tonight. This first award is the Joy S. Parker Memorial Award. This award is presented to the female student with the highest scholastic record. And this year, the Joy S. Parker Memorial Award is, is uh, given to Tracy Raftery. The Richard Mitchell Moore Memorial Award is presented to the male student with the highest scholastic record. And this year, this award goes to Josh Kerr. Trustees Award is presented annually <clears throat> for outstanding ministry, ministry leadership in an area church. I'm privileged this year to present the Trustees Award to Berwyn Anthony Hall. By the way, uh, these awards have a check on the back of them. Like I told you this morning, don't get home and hang it on the wall and forget to look on the back, okay? All right. The President's Award is presented annually for outstanding leadership among the student body and in all areas of college life. And I'm privileged to present the President's Award this year to Corey Counts. If you will pray with me as Dr. Sullivan prepares to come and 
preach our message tonight. Father, we do love you. We thank you so much for a time when we can gather to celebrate. And Lord, I know that each of these graduates, each of these award winners would say, but by the grace of God, they would not be here and be able to attain anything. So Father, tonight we give you glory and praise and honor for what you've done in the lives of these graduates. We thank you for the blessings of families and church families and for the way that they have stood by them and been obedient to support them in this call. So Father, help us to hear you prayerfully as Dr. Sullivan comes. We pray for your Holy Spirit to guide him with the words that we need to hear and pray your blessings upon him as he speaks to us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. President Fox, distinguished faculty, members of the 2017 graduating class, what a privilege it is to have opportunity to be here tonight to share with you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to think with me under this caption, I believe God. And I know you have been given many things to believe as you have been trained here in this wonderful institution. But I want to challenge you tonight to leave here with the determination to believe God. I want to call to your attention a verse of Scripture that is found in Acts 27, verse 25 where the Bible says, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe, God, that it shall be even as it has been told me. I believe God. That's what Paul said. Do we? Do you believe God? A poll would tell us that many who are here tonight would believe in God. But there is a vast difference between believing in God and believing God. When you believe in God, you believe in your mind that God is. But I want you to know God is whether you think He is or not. I want you to know that God is whether I think He is or not. God is, and God will always be. But oh, when you believe in God, you commit wholly unto Him all of your life for His way and for His will. How imperative it is that we should believe God. We often talk about how we believe the Bible. We talk about how the fact that the Bible is the infallible, inerrant Word of God. And we magnify the fact that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and for correction and for reproof. But oh, I want you to know the problem is that many of us just give mental assent to the Word of God. And there's vast difference between mental assent and really believing the Word of God. You see, we need to believe the Word of God like Willie William Jennings Bryan believed the will the Word of God. He was placed on the witness stand by an infidel lawyer. And that lawyer said to him, thinking that he would catch him off guard, is it true that you believe all of the Bible? 
And Mr. Bryan said, yes, I believe all of the Bible without any question. I believe it all. And the infidel lawyer said, do you mean to say, do you mean to say that you believe that Jonah swallowed the whale? He said, no, I don't believe that Jonah swallowed the whale. The Bible doesn't say that Jonah swallowed the whale. The Bible says that God prepared a great fish that swallowed Jonah. That's the way that it was. But Mr. Bryan said to the infidel lawyer, I would have you to understand that if the Bible said that Jonah swallowed a fish, I would believe it. Oh, dear friend, I want you to know that's the way we need to believe the Bible. We need to believe the Bible. An infidel went to hear one of the great preachers of London. That preacher would preach the gospel out of the Word of God every time that he went. Finally, someone said to the infidel, why do you go? You don't believe a thing the man says. He said, I know, but he does. And I want to say this evening, I pray that you'll know that I believe what I'm saying to you. I believe it. I truly believe it. I believe we ought to love the Bible like a young teenage girl loved the Bible. We ought to love the Bible, and it ought to be precious to our heart and to our minds. She, lived, she went to one of these churches where the pastor would get up and say, now, the Word of God didn't mean what it said. Oh, it would break her heart when she would hear her pastor say things like that. He would preach on the rich man and Lazarus, and he would say, now, there wasn't really any fire in hell. There really wasn't. The Lord didn't mean to say that he was, was burned on his tongue and that he needed a literal drop of water. None of that was true. She had listened to all she could stand. She went to him after the service and said, Pastor, could I ask you a question? He said, why, certainly. She said, if God, when you get up and read the Bible, you say that God didn't mean what he said. If the Lord didn't mean what he said, then why didn't he say what he meant? It would have been just as easy for God to have said what he meant if he hadn't meant it in the first place. But friend, he meant it in the first place. And you can know that this is verily, verily the word of Almighty God. This wonderful account of the Scripture that we have read and that we have turned your attention to is a part of a great passage of Scripture where there was one man, one man who stood in the presence of 275 disbelievers and said to them, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. I want you to know that God is going to save us and he's going to save me and all of you he will likewise save. Yes, be of good cheer, for I believe God. And I submit to you tonight that there never has been a better time for us to believe God than right now. We're in the days and times when there's great restlessness we're in the days and time when there 
is great proclivity in the minds and the hearts of people. We live in a day and time when men and women are disturbed and wondering what it is that they can do and where it is that they can go. And I want to suggest to you tonight that we can believe God and that we should tonight trust the truths of Almighty God and allow His li our lives to be strengthened. I want to suggest a few areas where we ought to believe God. I want to suggest to you, first of all, that we ought to believe God whenever He says to us that men without Jesus Christ are lost. Did you hear that, friend? Men without Jesus Christ are lost. Mark it down. There is no way that any individual can ever go to heaven except by the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no way that anyone can ever find the path to eternal life except through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But there are many people who do not believe that. There are many people who do not accept that. They will not accept the fact that without Jesus, they are lost. There was a family by the name of Meadows that came to me and said, we've never sinned. We've never sinned. We've never done anything wrong. We've always paid our bills. We've always been helpful to the needy. We've never sinned. We're not sinners. We're not lost because we have never sinned. I had a woman who came to me on one occasion and she said, oh, my husband, Frank, is such a wonderful man to his family. I don't see how a man so good to his family could be lost. I had another woman who came to me and said, John is such a wonderful man, such a moral man. All he needs to do is just Join the church. I said, no. All he needs to do is to believe in Jesus Christ, repent of his sin, and be born again. Oh, dear friend, I say to you, I believe God when he tells us that all men without Jesus Christ it all are lost. But likewise, I believe God whenever He tells us about the doom of the Christian, the blackest picture and the darkest picture that you have ever seen is that picture that is painted in God's Word of the condition of a soul without Jesus Christ. Oh, how terrible it is to be lost. How terrible it is to be under the darkness and the, and the gloom of not knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Whosoever was not found written in the Lamb's book of life was cast into the lake of fire and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and forever. Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. If just half of what the Bible has to say about the doom and the darkness of being lost without Jesus Christ, it's a terrible thing to be lost. To be lost means to be under the condemnation of God. To be lost 
means to be under the wrath of God. To be lost means to be under the curse of the law. How terrible it is for a man, a woman, to be lost without Jesus and have to go into the darkness and the gloom of hell. But oh, I believe God. I believe God when He tells us that His church will stand forever. Oh, dear friend, I believe God when He tells us, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You want to know who it is you're working for. You're working for the King of kings, the Lord of lords. You're working for that one who planted the church and who has promised you that the gates of hell shall in no way prevail against the church of Almighty God. Oh, how wonderful and how marvelous is the church of our Lord. For 68 years, it's been my privilege to stand behind the sacred desk and to present the message of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and to magnify the church. I've seen the skeptics of the church come and go. I've watched them as they have said that the church was dead, that it was gone. But oh, I want you to know the living church of the living God is alive tonight. And all of the gates of hell will never be able to pull down the church of God. But I believe even more than that. I believe God when He tells us that we are responsible for those who are lost. We have a responsibility for those who are lost. If you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his sin, and his blood will I require at thy hand. I believe God when he tells us that we have a responsibility for those who are lost. How long has it been since you have told a brother how to be saved? How long has it been since you prayed for a brother to be born again, to be saved? How long has it been since you've looked at your own body and determined whether or not it was indeed a stumbling block or a blessing to mankind. How long has it been? How long, my brother? How long, my sister, has it been since you have taken your stand for those who need to know Jesus and who, for whom we have such responsibility. But oh, I want you to see something else tonight. Having been a pastor for 46 years, I know the importance of this next thing that I believe. I believe that God, what God hath told us, we ought to do with our tithe. Malachi said, Will a man rob God? Wherein have you robbed me? Wherein have you robbed me? But in tithes and in offerings. You are cursed with a curse. I didn't say that. God said that. God said, if you don't do the right thing, with the tithe, you'll be cursed. You'll be cursed. Your work will be cursed. Your hand will be cursed. Your life will be cursed. Everything you touch and everything you do will be cursed. 
But God has said, don't say to me that you will not, will not bring the tithe into the storehouse. Don't tell me that you'll just say no, 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 no. I'll keep the tithe for myself. No, my brothers and sisters, if you're going to serve God, you'll have to be faithful to bring the tithe into the storehouse. For God says that if you don't, you will be cursed. But oh, there's a last thing that I want to say to you tonight that I believe. I believe God when he tells us that he can save all manner of sinners. It doesn't make any difference who it is or what they are. He says he is able also to save to the uttermost all that come unto God by him, seeing that he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Oh, our God is in the saving business. You see, there are no hard cases for our Lord. We sometimes think that this is a hard case and nothing can be done. But oh, he could cast seven devils out of Mary Magdalene. He was able to cast the legions of devils out of the Gadarene demoniac. He was able to ca cast an evil spirit out of a little boy. And as the great preacher said, D.L. Moody, whenever he spoke to the people, our Lord is able to save the devil's outcast. And oh, I submit to you, that is true. Our Lord is able to save the devil's outcast. There was one of the most wonderful revivals taking place on the Red River in a brush arbor a number of years ago. One night just before the service began, a person ran up to the evangelist and said the worst man, the meanest man in all of this area is in the service tonight. He's killed three people in the last three, in the last 15 years. He has done all kinds of things that are wrong. We've never seen him inside of the church. He is indeed a, the worst man in all of this area. He came for three nights and squatted down by the side of a big oak tree about 50 feet or yards outside of the, of the brush arbor. And every night, whenever it was time to have the invitation, he would get up and leave. On the morning after the third night that he had been there, he came running through the field. He went out and, and went home, and as he got home that night, there was great disturbance in his soul. The Holy Spirit was convicting him and speaking to his heart. The Holy Spirit, who is the star witness for the Lord Jesus Christ, was convincing him of his need of Jesus. He walked the floor all night long. He walked the yard, and finally when it was daylight, he got his cotton sack and went out into the field and began to pick cotton, but he couldn't get away from the Holy Spirit's presence and convicting power. The Holy Spirit kept tugging at his heart. He made a pillar out of that, out of that cotton sack and knelt down and began to pray. And he prayed and he said, Oh, dear Lord, oh, dear Lord. The preacher said tonight, 
that you're able to save unto the uttermost. All that will come unto you by him. Oh, if that's true, save my soul. And all oh, that night and next morning as they were having their morning service, their service was interrupted as they heard the yell of a cowboy and he came climbing over the fence. And when he got up to the, to the brush arbor, he said, oh, he saved me. He saved me. I don't know how he could have done it, but he has saved my soul. And oh, he told then exactly what I've already told you of what had happened to him and how it was that he knelt down and prayed that prayer. Oh, Lord God, if you can save my soul, forgive me of my sin and save me now. And he said, it seemed as if something just busted on the inside of me. And I found and I know that Jesus Christ has saved my soul. Oh, tonight I want you to know I believe God. And I want you to believe God. There are hundreds of examples in the Bible that might have been added to what I've shared tonight. I believe God whenever he said to Moses, cast down your rod. And he cast it down and it became a snake. And he said to him, pick it up by the tail. And he did and it became his rod. I believe God whenever the Bible says that he made an axe head to float. I believe God whenever it says that he took five loaves and two fishes and fed 5,000 men plus women and children. I believe God whenever it tells us that he raised the dead. I believe God whenever it tells us that he destroyed this world with a great flood. I believe God whenever it tells us that that rainbow is his promise to never again destroy this world by water. I believe God when it tells us that he shall come again. I believe God whenever it tells us that he's going to destroy this earth with fire. I believe God when he tells us that he's going to make a new heaven and a new earth. I believe God and I urge each person that is present today to believe God. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for the privilege and the opportunity that we've had to open your word and to feed upon it. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you've given us opportunity to learn and see the many things that we can believe and help us, Lord, not to just give mental assent to things, but help us to truly believe all of these things and honor you. For it's in Jesus' name that we ask it all. Amen. could almost feel that uh, we need to give an invitation at this time, but I believe Dr. Sullivan has done that. Thank you so much for that word. Well, at this particular time, 
I would act, like to ask these two rows of candidates for degrees to please stand. And to the chairman of our trustee board, Mr. Chairman, I have the privilege of presenting the members of the 2017 graduating class who have successfully completed the requirements for their degrees. As chairman, I am pleased to acknowledge the members of the 2017 graduating class with the authority of the Board of Trustees of the Clear Creek Baptist Bible College. I award these degrees with all the rights and the privileges that they confer. And now I would like to ask just the second row to take your seats. First row, remain standing. We have in the certificate in Bible one student, Bruce W. Harrison. Bruce says, my fondest memory from Clear Creek is that although I was an online student, I was still able to sense the spirituality and love for Jesus that the professors and staff have. As a pastor, I found that the lectures served not only to educate me, but also to feed me spiritually. I also want to thank my wife, my family, my church, and especially our Lord for their support that it has been afforded me. And now for the Associate of Arts, First student is Joel D. Golliver. Joel says, My fondest memory at Clear Creek was the fellowship I enjoyed with the guys on trips during Clear Creek days. I also want to thank my parents and grandparents for their support throughout my education. Joseph Glenn Noah in absentia. Shirley Renee Schofield. Renee says, my fondest memories at Clear Creek are attending Porca Palooza's and playing bocce ball in Dr. Merrick's class. I also want to thank my family and friends who have supported me, but I especially want to thank my husband and my sister Maddie and my son Grayson, without whom I could not have done this. Luico Carter Welch. Luico says, my fondest memories will be of the encouragement from all of my professors to diligently study my Bible from the perspective of the author's intent. Moreover, they have taught me to always exegete the passage and never eisegete. Two semesters of Hebrew opened my eyes to the five solas. I will always remember the encouragement from my faithful wife, Jan, who loves the Lord with all her heart. Now for the Bachelor of Arts degrees. Rachel Lynn Allen. Rachel says, During my time at Clear Creek, I've had some of the fondest times in my life. Through all of it, I've gained a better understanding of my Lord and His love for His children. I've gained a greater knowledge of the Scriptures and confidence in teaching as I go on to ministry. I'm thankful to have met professors and staff who have poured into my life, both in and out of the classroom. I've also been blessed to form some of the closest friendships. I cannot praise God enough for bringing me to Clear Creek and for all he's done in my life during these years. William Glenn Britton. William says, I would not be who I am today or where I am today if not for the godly witness of my parents and sister. I will forever be thankful for how they have led me to know about God, His Word, and His church. Furthermore, my church family has helped and supported me in every possible way. I'm so thankful for them. Thankful for Dr. Helton and Sister Brenda, who've been such precious mentors, advisors, and friends. I will always be thankful for how the Lord has shaped me through them. All of my professors and the administration at Clear Creek have been tremendous blessings, and I am thankful for each of them. To God be the glory. Spencer Eugene Davis Connor. Spencer says, While at Clear Creek, I have furthered my knowledge of the Bible, learned about planning a worship event, and serving in local churches. 
I have enjoyed late night studying and hiking as well as working with friends. I also want to thank my family and friends who have made my time at Clear Creek so incredible. Corey Douglas Counts. Corey says, I gained self-confidence in preaching and learned about my strengths and weaknesses while at Clear Creek. I enjoyed many times of laughter and prayer with my friends. I also married my wife, Alyssa, during my time here. One of the funniest memories I have is watching Ben Everly ride a skateboard. <laughs> my appreciation goes out to my wife, my family, my wife's family, as well as the staff and students of Clear Creek. Michael Paul Deland. Michael says, my fondest memories come from my time at the Kingston, Tennessee Extension Center. I was able to learn under some incredible professors who've had a profound influence on my ministry, Dr. Roy Graves, Dr. Sonny Works, and Dr. Wayland Payne, have etched in me a love for the ministry in which we find ourselves compelled to minister. While distance learning is at its nature a challenge, Clear Creek has provided a platform for formal biblical learning that will forever leave a mark on my ministry. For that, I am eternally grateful. I am also so very grateful for the support and patience of my wife and children during my time at Clear Creek. Cassandra Joy Dow. Casey says, at Clear Creek, I have discovered a part of God that I had never known and that he loves me more than I could ever imagine. Benjamin Carl Everly. Ben says, I learned how to preach expository sermons at Clear Creek. I appreciated the love and support I was shown when I lost my granddad in November 2014. I remember Papa Diddy praying that I would be able to cry, and I did. I will miss my walks with Dr. Lucas and will always remember Dr. Fox and I having the servers sing happy birthday to each other at Gondolier. I also cherish the counseling and advice I received from Dean Goodman. He's an awesome pastor and mentor. Berwin Anthony Hall. Tony says, At Clear Creek, I received a greater understanding of the Bible and the context of each passage. The whole journey here has given me fond memories. I've made many friends and ministry partners throughout my time here. My family, especially my wife, Renita, has pushed me so hard to finish. Clear Creek will always be special to me. Joshua Linton. Her. Joshua says, My fondest memories here include time with friends, walks with Dr. Lucas and Ben Everly, and leading worship with Sam Gilbreth and Spencer Connor. Thanks to my dad and Pastor Jeff for all their support, and to Dr. Lucas and Dean Goodman for the long talks and being my mentors. They're men I look up to a lot. Thanks to Kelly for keeping me motivated and encouraged. Thanks to the Lord for leading me to Clear Creek. I also want to thank all of my Clear Creek friends and family. May God bless you all. Diana Ashley McKinney. Diana says, My fondest memories at Clear Creek are meeting some great friends and growing in my Bible knowledge, which includes memorizing a large amount of Scripture and gaining a basic understanding of Greek and Hebrew. And I want to thank my husband for always supporting and encouraging me. Kendra Lynn McNeely. Kendra says, Seeing the beauty of God's creation on campus during every change of season is my fondest memory from Clear Creek. I have loved the friendships that I have made here and will always cherish our time spent together both on and off campus. The kindness, love, and knowledge that each of my professors has so willingly shared with each and every one of us will be remembered always. And we have a duo. Martin Michael Raftery and Tracy Raftery. 
Mike says, Never did I think I would be preaching the gospel from where I came from. I will never forget the grace and guidance extended to me while learning here at Clear Creek. I really didn't think I was going to continue pursuing my degree, but God is so good and strong even when we are not. And I'm glad that he gave me a great support system with my family at Clear Creek. I will also never forget the beauty of this place. I loved waking up every day in this gorgeous environment. Tracy says, My fondest memory at Clear Creek is digging for the archaeology class, seeing the layers of strata, and learning how to use the different tools. I also want to thank my Lord and Savior, my husband, my children, and my parents for their love and support. Aaron Wesley Dean Ray. Aaron says, All of the wonderful trips, hikes, and late nights that forged a lasting bond with many of my fellow students are fond memories. These men of God have become my brothers over the course of my time here. I have also enjoyed exploring the beauty of God's creation through hiking trails, climbing mountains, and watching meteor showers with Dr. John and Andrew Diddy. I would also like to thank my mother, who instilled a love of Christ within me. Lastly, I want to thank my wife, Hannah, who strengthens me each day as she endows me with her loving support. Congratulations. Let's pray. Father, we want to stop for a moment and just praise you for this time of worship. We want to say thank you for these graduates. We give thanks for the gift of life that you've given to each of them. We give thanks for the salvation through Jesus Christ that each graduate knows and enjoys. Father, we give thanks for the call to ministry and service that each graduate possesses and it's demonstrated over the years. We give thanks to you for the spiritual gifts that each graduate has because your spirit indwells them and has gifted them. We give thanks for the gift of the future which each graduate hopes for and has prepared his or herself to do. Lord Jesus, we acknowledge that everything is from you and it's for your good pleasure and your glory. We now present these graduates to you, thanking you for each one. We thank you for each one's families, friends, supporters, encouragers, pastors, mentors. Father, we thank you for those who sacrificially have given to provide for their education. We thank you for everyone who has helped to make this moment possible for these graduates. We want to dedicate these graduates to you, Father. We pray that you give each a spirit of wisdom and illumination so that they may continue to deepen the relationship with you. We dedicate these graduates to you, and we pray that out of your riches of glory, you will strengthen them with the power of your Holy Spirit, and especially on those hard, lonely days of ministry. We pray that our graduates may reflect often on how wide, how long, how high, and how deep your love is. We pray that you fill our graduates with a knowledge of your will each day of their lives. May they own an abundance of wisdom and understanding when it comes to your will. We pray that our graduates will live lives worthy of the calling and of the Lord whom they serve. May our graduates please you in every way, bearing the harvest of fruit for your kingdom. May our graduates refuse to build their own kingdoms. May our graduates approve themselves as men and women who need never be ashamed at the level of commitment and service they render on behalf of their Lord Jesus. May our graduates be filled with the fruit of righteousness. May they be sincere and blameless until the coming of the Lord. We pray that our graduates' hearts and minds will be fastened on you. And Father, we offer our graduates as an offering, which we pray is a sweet aroma to you. May you lead them and guide them day by day, night by night, year by year, until you come for your bride. 
And Father, we now pray that to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to his power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Graduates, I'm going to ask you to please stand. You have now made an important transition in your educational journey and relationship to Clear Creek. You are now a part of our alumni. I'm going to ask you to take your tassels and move them over now. Amen. Before we send you from this place and as you make your transition to another season of ministry, uh, we want you to go with a commitment in mind as we have invested in you here at Clear Creek and we send you forth, we want you to be aware of the responsibility that you now hold, uh, not only as an ambassador for Christ, but an ambassador for Clear Creek an ambassador as a Christian to hold yourself and to walk in a way that would point others to Christ. So I want to ask you, if you will, if you have your program as, as the graduates, if you do, I want to do a responsive reading with you. This is a sending forth. This is a charge to you as graduates. And before God and these witnesses here, you will pledge uh, to take uh, what you have uh, been equipped with here as we send you forth. You will commit to taking that seriously and to glorify God in all that you do. Graduates, the granting of this diploma marks your assumption of relationships and new responsibilities, both to Clear Creek Baptist Bible College and to the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are officially made one of the alumni of the college. You are now responsible for the application of your studies to ministry and a finer quality of leadership for the church. Christians will expect you to be a reliable guide in the realm of doctrine, morals and discipleship and a sure guide in right relationships with Almighty God. With confidence we send you forth from this campus graduates to join those God called men and women who have preceded you. We believe the education you have received here has launched you on a lifetime of consecrated learning which will make you ever more effective in ministry. You have been blessed by your studies here. Now you must be a blessing to others. We send you forth with the prayer that God will guide you. We hope that however far your journey takes you, you will visit our campus often. If you cannot return to walk on campus, we hope you will make the trip in imagination and memory. But wherever you are, may the Holy Spirit use you as a witness to introduce men and women to the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to stand firm in the faith as a testimony to the Word of God and to the church as the pillar and ground of truth. Graduates, you have received from the hands of countless people and churches a generous portion of the cost of your education for ministry. Many of these donors do not know you and have never visited our campus. By faith, a portion of their lives has been minted and channeled through Clear Creek Baptist Bible College into your life because they hoped for more excellent ministers of the gospel. Gratitude requires not only that you strive to fulfill their hopes, but also that you strive to transmit their hope for competent ministers to the hearts of others. 
we trust that you will not only be a supporter of Clear Creek, but that you will also be a solicitor of such support to the end that future generations of ministers may be accorded even richer opportunities than have been yours. Your gratitude to all who have had a part in your education can best be expressed by your faithfulness as a Christian minister. As graduates, we welcome you to the body of alumni of Clear Creek Baptist Bible College. God help us to never forget the importance of the work that is before us. Amen. Congregation, would you still please stand for a closing hymn and remain standing for the benediction, please. Very appropriate for this evening. 586, we have a story to tell to the nations. We have a story to tell to the nations that shall turn.
Let's pray together. Father God, we love you and praise you tonight. We thank you for this glorious worship experience. We thank you for these who have been on this leg of the journey. But Father, we recognize that this journey is not complete and that we've got a message to send to the nations. And we pray that they would so believe you and be empowered by your spirit that they would be able to do that work that you've called them to do. So, Father, we recognize tonight that the weapons that you have prepared for them are not carnal, but are mighty through you to the pulling down of strongholds, the casting down of imaginations, and every high and lofty thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of you. So we pray tonight for these young people as they begin a new phase in ministry. And so we ask that you would fill them with your blessed Holy Spirit Give them the gift of your spirit by your grace. Watch over them and protect them. Continue to use them as instruments of righteousness as they go forth within the context of your kingdom's work. Bless us now, Father, as we depart from this place. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.